Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, August 31st, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brock Perry, one of our undergraduate interns, came across some neat malware in his honeypot. The attack first looks like any other attack against open telnet and sh ports so if you're standard brute forcing in this case the raspberry pi default credentials did gain access to the honeypot they then uh, kill competing malware set up backdoors for example a new authorized the keys file and the like so pretty much standard fare but gets a little bit more interesting is the kind of command and control channel they're using. The entire command control channel is implemented as a simple bash script and within bash they're actually implementing a com- not complete but sufficiently complete IRC client that even waits and then verifies digitally signed commands and then of course executes. The script does not just launch a command line IRC client, instead it uses the def TCP trick in order to get access to the IRC server. So not even netcat is required here. The bot will then join a channel and wait for commands and then verify digital signature using OpenSSL, which I guess is sort of the one uh, external dependency in some ways that the script still requires. Only uses MD5, not sure why they didn't go for a better hash, given that the code really wouldn't be all that different. Uh, but, well, it's still kind of interesting what can be done with just a few lines of bash. I believe the motivation here is just to eliminate dependencies. This type of script is going after... IoT devices, small minimum Linux installs that often don't have some of the uh, tools and uh, binaries that you're sort of taking for granted uh, from full uh, Linux installs. The James Webb Telescope and the neat images it captures have been all over the news recently. Attackers, of course, can let an opportunity like this pass. Securonix has a write-up of some recent malware that hides part of its code at the end of a legitimate James Webb image published by NASA. At first sight, the data looks like a certificate, but uh, once you base64 decode uh, the certificate, well, uh, it actually becomes a malicious Windows executable. Securonix called the malware Go Web Fuscator based on it being written in Go. And of course, the web is spelled here with two uh, B, just like the James Webb uh, telescope. By the way, uh, we also got a note from a reader that they observed uh, on Monday when Artemis was supposed to start a YouTube video that claimed to show how Artemis blows up. The video has now been uh, taken down, but that particular uh, reader uh, says that they received some malware actually when uh, trying to access that video on YouTube. Of course, yet another uh, big sort of public event uh, and uh, bad actors likes like to attach themselves uh, to these kind of events. Not sure what was happening there with the malware. A little bit unusual for YouTube to surf malware. Like I said, wasn't able to reproduce any of that. And McAfee identified five popular Google Chrome extensions that practice what is sometimes called cookie stuffing. The malicious extension will take advantage of affiliate programs by adding cookies with its own affiliate ID if the user is now visiting particular websites that uh, basically put out these affiliate uh, programs, then the miscreant behind this uh, affiliate ID will receive the credit and eventually maybe a payment. The extension in question claims to allow you to download Netflix videos, take screenshots, and, well, help track prices on e-commerce websites. Of course, that's not really what they're doing. McAfee states that uh, these extensions have been installed 1.4 million times. 
And then there's an interesting discussion on the Chromium bug tracker. It reveals a security issue that affects all current browsers based on Chromium. Initially, a bug was reported that a particular test uh, failed when building Chromium. This uh, test uh, was linked to restricting a clipboard access and well um, it then required user interaction so the person reporting this as a bug basically stated that well the test failed and the response was well let's get rid of the uh, user interaction uh, to require a clipboard access and now we are in a place where current browsers that are based on chromium do allow websites to access uh, the clipboard there's discussion forth and back uh, within uh, this particular threat uh, in the bug tracker, how to uh, fix this or what the right solution here is. Apparently the standard sort of doesn't allow for any user interaction here. However, Firefox, Safari are using a user interaction exactly uh, to prevent this particular issue. No fix at this point uh, released, uh, so any current version of a browser that's based on Chromium, like, like of course, Chrome and uh, then uh, Microsoft Edge uh, are susceptible uh, to this issue. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.